Hello Taurus and welcome to your April 2024 forecast. I'm Nicholas Ashbot. It's great to see everybody. I hope you're doing well. We're going to be taking a look at all of the energy and the messages that are coming through for this six week period or so. And this is really going to help you focus on embracing opportunities. And that's why I'm here, empowerment. Um, as always, you can use this for sun rising and moon and we'll get into all of that a little bit later. Let's begin with what I was sensing in dreams and meditation this morning. So it's going to be a busy month. Let's put it that way. What I saw was someone that had basically fallen asleep, uh, didn't want to wake up to the sound of the alarm clock. And then I just saw like all of these notifications on their phone, messages, telephone calls, etc. And I think sometimes we all have this moment where we're just maybe like a little bit nervous about taking that first step if it's going to be a busy day or sometimes we just want to pull the covers over our heads. But I do feel like there's so much to wake up for. There's so much to do. There's a lot of good stuff to look forward to. I think it's important to decide what you want, and what you don't. We'll talk more about that in a second. I featured the eight of wands here because it's a card of productivity. Sometimes all you have to do, it's kind of like stepping on an escalator, right? All you have to do is put that foot on and then the momentum and the energy pulls you forward. And I really do feel that if you just start uh, like planting some seeds, creating some conversations, doing some things here and there, uh, there will be this sort of gravity that allows for you to just go along for the ride. But you do have to show up. And that was the first message that came through. Um, rest and recalibrate. If you're getting this before the new month is hitting, then perfect. If you're watching this after April has started, then I think it's going to be really important for you to, no matter what, just take a day, take an afternoon, take a few minutes and be kind to yourself and really take stock of what matters most. Because I think that the clarity and the decisiveness when it comes to saying, I want this or I don't want this, it's also going to set you up for leadership opportunities in the future and just being more in control of your schedule and your life. And this is the most important piece. So when I was looking at the phone that was just sitting there and vibrating <laughs> with all these things, I thought, you have to speak up. You have to say what you want. So we have judgment here. This is really the universe saying, what's your decision? And it's important not to send mixed signals uh, or to err on the side of like no communication. Sometimes we just think they'll get the hint, but oftentimes people don't. And when you let silence sort of fill the space, sometimes they'll create their own narratives, which may be better or worse than just you coming in and saying, I'm not interested, or I need to focus on this right now. Also, it's really gratifying and nice for the other party to hear, let's do this, I'm, I'm interested. So I'm a big fan of transparency and clarity. It will help you, it will help others. And this is the most important piece before we start shuffling the cards. It's gonna help the powers that be, the universe basically, set up a synchronicity for you. When you are crystal clear on what it is that you want, then the path will start to open up. When you're foggy, when you're trying to think about, oh, maybe this, maybe that, I'm not sure, and it's like this, <laughs> the universe doesn't know how to light the path for you. So this is a time to get really, really clear and state intention, okay? This will help a synchronicity happen faster. This is also going to create a sense of trust and respect from others because at the end of the day, they know where they stand with you. All right, with that being said, let's give the cards a shuffle and see what additional messages are coming through. Again, a reminder that we're gonna be able to use this for sun rising and moon, and we'll look at all of that in just a bit. How's everybody doing today? Leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel maybe at the beginning of this reading, how you feel after. Keep me posted on how the month sort of ends up looking for you. I read every single comment and I appreciate it. All right, close your eyes for a second. Take a deep breath and let's really tune in together and see what's coming through in April. Already off to a strong start with the Hermit.
Nice synchronicity there. I was talking about planting seeds. We have a gateway as well. Okay, let's begin. We're going to start off with your catalyst and what a great catalyst you got. The gateway card here. This is representing for many of you, we could look at it at either end of the major arcana. So this could be like a world moment where there's expansion and you're going through that stargate. It could also be the moment right after where you're starting something new, the, the fool. So ends and beginnings for sure. And what I really love about this particular illustration is the person's creating the gate through their own vision and action and um, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so the work that you're putting into things, it's totally going to pay off. This may be more the month where you're laying some of the groundwork, but by the end of the month, that gateway, that door should be opening. And that is in alignment with what I saw happening with the phone. I love how the guides uh, kind of show us things that we can understand. So those notifications showing it's going to get busy. So you're going to lay the groundwork, open up the door and uh, some people, some opportunities, some things are going to start to come through that. Okay, great energy. We could also look as a gate card and kind of like compare it to the death card because it's transformative and death is also ends and beginnings. Okay, let's glance at everything here and see what the overarching um, energy is. Let me just get it organized so we can see it all clearly. Uh, so I really loved the hermit at the center because this is like spiritual expertise and power. We have opportunity on top of it. We do have something around you and this is why I got the judgment message. You've got to state boundaries or be decisive and that will cut the cords here around the devil. But everything else is fairly manageable. Um, Four of Swords also waiting for this to solve itself, but it's not going to happen. So anyway, let's begin with the hermit. This is you taking your time, you researching things, really also getting in touch with who you are. For some of you finding and exercising your sort of voice and, and vision. And when you step forward with hermit energy, people listen. This is like, you know, a teacher or a mentor that comes in and you just know they've got the life experience. Some people may not be aware of all of your skills or expertise or special passion. And so this is a month also to let them know where that expertise exists. Okay. Uh, you may also be in a moment here. This is the pulling the, the covers over your head where it's like just five more minutes. I remember when I was a little kid and, you know, especially when it was like elementary school or whatever, my mom was like, yeah, five more minutes. But when we're an adult, we can't really always get those five extra minutes in the morning. There's sometimes things that have to be done. Um, give yourself a break though. It may not be in the morning. It might be another time. Give yourself a break on the weekend. Make sure at night you're getting to bed on time. Um, watch a show that you like. Read a book that you like. Don't do all work all the time. I work really hard, as many of you know. I put out a lot of videos per month. Um, but I do try to spend some time with my dog, with myself and my friends. And just I need those quiet moments. So put it in your schedule. If you don't do it for yourself, no one else is going to do it. Okay, Taurus? Let's look at what's crossing this card. So um, we have this wisdom and we have this opportunity and out of that comes the Ace of Pentacles. We also see when you make time for yourself, this is in the health space, the seed can also be the Ace of Pentacles. Something really beautiful could come of this. So whatever it is that you wanna do for yourself for personal development is also going to lead to happiness, satisfaction and kind of bring you to the next level, okay? This can be a new job opportunity. It can be pregnancy. It can be um, also for some of you, a person ex uh, extending their hand and saying, I want to partner with you, whether that's business or love. The ace is great. It's the birth of something new and typically something really beneficial or something that's welcome. And um, it's really also kind of potential and the universe asking you, are you going to embrace, does this suit you? Are you going to embrace it? Are you going to do the work? Just like one of my orchids back there or the spider plant or whatever, I have my other plants kind of eased in because of the rainstorm that we have. But um, if you don't water them and take care of them and protect them like I'm doing, then, um, you know, the seed doesn't really grow. So that's the first question is, are you ready to put time and energy 
and nurturing into whatever that seed of opportunity is in front of you. I love what we see here in your deep past. We have the chariot with a, a very Taurus friendly illustration here. There's either an ox or a bull here and they're driving this sort of chariot in two directions. So one of your challenges, and I think you've probably finally landed on the right spot with this, but it's realizing you can't be in two places at once. And there is this month, you're kind of at a fork in the road, some of you, where you're going to have to make a, a decision. And the sooner and the more, again, direct you are with that, the easier it's going to be for everybody. This is a really good card just for management and control. And so you've got it. Basically, these two cards tell me you've got it. This one plus the wisdom. It's just a matter of exercising the, the wisdom and the foresight and also saying, I choose this. I want to give this a try, whatever this seed of opportunity is for you, okay? And this is also a, a self-starting card. So we don't always need the emperor or the empress there. The chariot means you can pull all of these things together. And sometimes it is like hurting cats, like that commercial they once did on TV. You're trying to pull a lot of different people that may not listen, but you can do it. Just pick and choose battles and really be decisive as to what matters most for you. The main message here is you have what it takes to feed and grow this idea. And it's just a matter of taking the reins and doing it. We have two cards here in recent past. This is what most of you are going to be experiencing or thinking or going through when you watch this. So we have a reversed Hierophant, uh, which is resistant to what people want. This is a card of law and order and structure. So we would see this card representing government, school, religion, things that are very fixed. And a reversed Hierophant wants to break down those walls a little bit and try something different. I love all of the oxes and bulls that we have on this particular um, deck here. So again, here we have cool, calm, collected. Find your Zen and don't let people get your uh, sort of temper flaring. This Hierophant um, is basically saying, I'm strong enough to do this. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to take it one step at a time. I love also that he's kind of, he's got this little star and then a little tiny baby in the center. He realizes that sometimes it's time for like a changing of the guard or something brand new. And the old guard often has a hard time embracing something new. They want it to be predictable, the same old, same old. With that being said, this card does invite a little bit more organization because if it's reversed, it might be showing you that there's a lot of stuff going on. And again, if you get your priorities uh, really, really organized, everything will start to fall into place. Beneath the card was an eight of swords in reverse, which is auspicious. This is showing that your eyes are opening. The blindfolded cards, we actually want to get them <laughs> reversed because it shows um, an opening. Maybe for some of you, you're opening your heart or opening your mind to something new. Maybe you're listening or looking with more discernment and clarity than you have before. So sometimes it's good to get especially a card that can show a challenge reversed because it's showing that it's not going to be as difficult. You're going to see the patterns this month. You're going to see the traps, the gatekeepers, and also the opportunities. You can take what you need and leave what you don't. The, the last thing with this, whether it's Eight of Swords or Two of Swords, you can't put things back into the box sometimes. So if something has come to your attention, as we can see here at the center with this Ace of Pentacles, it's requiring action. And there'll be something good once you take action on that, okay? Now let's take a look at your crowning card. We have Four of Swords. As I said at the very beginning, you would benefit whenever you get a moment of freedom or downtime, just enjoy it. You know, take a walk, uh, take a nap, see a movie, read a book, listen to a podcast, whatever it is that you want to do. Four of Swords is saying, yeah, that's going to allow you not only to feel better, but you get ideas. Light bulb moments happen during these uh, periods of rest and space. You can't fill up every single moment in the day. Uh, if you do, it's just going to be exhausting. So take care of yourself. All right. And that's all we really have with that. Now, there is a nuance, which I mentioned earlier, uh, and I'm going to say it one more time here. I'll talk even more about it here. But this is a card of inaction. 
this is a card that requires attention this is this is something that's good this is something that's keeping you still so you have to act you have to you have to eventually stop hitting snooze and wake up and that's what we see here uh, when we're looking at the um that you we're asking we're actually missing a card isn't that funny i just saw that i'm like where's the next card so let's pull it now that very rarely happens but um that's fun all right this is special we have to see what it is that you're missing what, what is your eight of swords moment here that i'm like wait we need one more thing okay <laughs> oh i've been doing a lot of readings and a lot of stuff lately so thank you for being patient four of wands uh in reverse in the near future, things are starting to turn around, but it's also calling to attention how much energy you're putting into relationships. Invariably, Four of Wands is super positive, right? But with it reversed, this is basically saying, are you putting in the lion's share of the energy to get someone to listen, to get someone to call, to get someone to pay attention? Take a step back. Let there be ebb and flow. Uh, it's good to also have a little bit of distance, even in a healthy relationship, so that the two of you can breathe. So it's um, boundaries, it's reciprocity, and it's also you not getting impatient because this is like setting a table for dinner. <laughs> you get everything ready, and if someone's five minutes late but they still show up, it's okay. Um, they're, they're, there's a synchronicity in, in route, and it's not going to take too long, but you don't want to lose faith or hope just because something is still cooking or brewing or getting perfectly aligned for you. Four of Wands can show me here, especially it's hidden. We didn't see it initially. It's saying many of you may have not even thought it was probable or possible to have some sort of a connection come through. And if we connect this surprise Four of Wands to this, someone could reach out to you and say, would you like to be a part of this? Could be a relationship, could be a job, could be a special project, could be an opportunity for growth. And someone says, I've got you. They have your back. You didn't know it. You didn't see it. I certainly didn't see it till I pulled the card. So there's something special about this Four of Wands. Unexpected ally, friendship, or partnership is somehow en route. Okay? Now we'll look at you. So you're coming through with a beautiful, strong earth energy coming through as yourself, which I love. Um, like I said, lots of cows and bulls and oxes on this particular deck here, but we have uh, a chance to say, I, I want this. A knight fights and moves for what it is that they want. They raise their hand, speak up. So if there's something that you need or want or are interested in, it's time to go for it. This is also showing movement and opportunity and really great energy with respect to time, energy, money, and other resources in your life. You're coming through really, really strong this month, and that's heartening, I think. In the environment, we have the devil. The devil is a clear indicator of what it is that you need to focus on to feel free, to clear out anything that's holding you back. This is a really cool illustration. If we look closely, we can see two people that are tethered in a web, and then we see the devil above. So here's what the devil card represents. It can be that feeling of being stuck, of course. And sometimes what happens is we get stuck in a promise that we can't keep or we get stuck by um, maybe even signing a contract that is too restrictive. So, of course, those are the first two things that I would say. Keep your promises. Don't overextend yourself. Don't overpromise. Um, when it comes to anything that doesn't feel right from the beginning, say it and avoid it because it usually doesn't get better. If something starts off difficult and challenging or less than ideal, it's, it probably is going to be throughout the process. What you can do at the very beginning of the month to just maybe even completely avoid this altogether, that's why you tune in, right? This could just simply be you needing to be clear, like I said, rather than sort of just hoping that people get the hint, say, no, this doesn't work, or specifically that something is wrong. Uh, the devil doesn't like the following. Honesty, transparency, and accountability. If you are accountable, if you are honest, and if you are clear, whatever that is, it's going to find another person who doesn't have those qualities. Emanate, the, uh, not emanate, yes. I, embody, it was the word I was looking for. Embody that throughout the month, and you're going to be fine, folks, okay? Okay. There could also just be someone around you that is beyond your level of help or expertise. So know what you know and 
know what you don't know and say that and say, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't help you with this, but you should try this person. It's another way to avoid getting caught up in the web. Plus, if there's somebody that is going through like an addiction or something really difficult and their, their vision is clouded, again, it's not getting pulled into their quagmire. You got to wait until someone's ready to accept help. All right. And that's pretty much it. Now, there could also be something that you are witness to. This is environmental, so it's not necessarily you. You could see something happen at work. You might hear someone talk about doing something that's wrong, or you just look at someone and you catch them in a lie. So you have a choice and possibly even a call to action here to, to do something about it, okay? And that's the last message on that. We'll dig a little bit deeper when I specifically look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, but that gives you enough to kind of see what you're dealing with in the environment. Again, you're coming through really strong when we look at opportunities. And by the way, this can be a partnership, a page and a night, very nicely connected. So we have a page of pentacles coming through in hopes, fears, and opportunities, and things are starting to move in the right direction, folks. Um, pages are great at listening and thinking about things and kind of ruminating on them. They're great at communicating and delivering it. They're basically the mediums in the uh, court cards because they're the go-betweens, they're right in the middle. And they're very, very good at the communication piece. So breaking it down into everyday terms, if you know your value and you know what you want this month, negotiation skills, amazing. Uh, the ability for other people to get what you're saying and want to invest, amazing. And opportunities, this is the gateway basically, or the gate rather, you have this ability to speak it into existence and use data and information and you know stuff in black and white to help lay it out for someone. Show them real life examples. It's all in the facts this month. And we have three really great pentacles cards, the ace, um, the knight, and the page. All in an upright or, you know, this is basically upright, even though it's crossing and positive placement. So I like what's going on. I think that uh, you've got a lot of good opportunities this month. That's why the phone in my dream was kind of ringing off the hook. That's an old, by the way, I realize people nowadays don't get it because we don't hang up phones, but as early as the early 2000s, late, late 90s, there were still phones that had cords, and that's what that meant, because it would be ringing off the hook. I realize sometimes some of the old stuff has to be explained, so that's what I meant by that. Now it would just be buzzing off the table, I guess, um, or out of the charger. Anyway, <laughs> uh, in, your, um, in your outcome, we have the Queen of Cups in reverse. This is the self-care card. Some of you are just emotionally spent a bit. And so take a moment, ask for help if you need it, lean on others if you need it, um, and see just how much you have to offer. Queen of Cups ultimately is a really good card. It's going to connect nicely with love, creativity, and intuition. So when you can clear yourself out a little bit and find the balance, magic starts to happen. You start to really see and sense and connect with others. So I would say one of the most important things you can do this month is self-care. There could be, because this was hidden, um, there could be love that's coming in or friendship that's coming in. And the, sometimes it's inconvenient, the timing, right? You think to yourself, I just decided that I was going to go back to school or, you know, I'm really busy with this project or endeavor. Or maybe some of you are just out of a relationship that was long term and you thought to yourself, I'm good. Sometimes when you're in that place of detachment, the universe says, Yes, you're great, actually. And because of that, I'm going to offer you an upgrade. So you get to decide, Taurus, what you want. But there could be love coming in. And we'll go deeper into that um, in just a few moments. First, we're going to start off with health. This is the expanded forecast, health, wealth, love, and destiny. The first of which is going to be focusing on mind, body, and spirit. In your health area, we actually got that seed. So like I said, this is a great time to start something new. The Ace of Pentacles is beginnings. And if you plant a seed of, you know, something that's really, really going to help you, um, a new sleep sort of routine, something improving with your exercise or your diet or whatever, this is the time where that could actually take root, take hold, and really show up in a way that's important and supportive of whatever it is you're trying to create in your life. 
This is pregnancy. So for those of you that are trying to get pregnant, trying to adopt a child, maybe working with in vitro fertilization, surrogacy, there's so many different uh, methods nowadays. This is showing that there could be some movement on that front, which is promising. For the rest of us, it's just saying, give yourself a moment, the space. We talked about this earlier, space in your, uh, in your schedule, space in your thoughts, and remember things don't grow or happen overnight. When they do happen though, there might be a lot of things at once, but that initial phase of germination is what it takes here. Many of you saw that I launched the podcast. There was a lot of planning. The, that seed moment for me was one year. I had to find a producer. I had to see if I was gonna do this in person or remote. I had to find an editor. I had to find a lawyer. I had to find all these things. And then I had to try different things, reach out to different people. It took forever because I do 50 videos a month. I do a lot of production here. And then finally I was like, time to, time to do this. Let's find it, let's send it out. Um, and, um, and then it was only like a two month process, but there was a gestation period or a growth period of about a year for me. So sometimes in your life, I know we're talking about health, but big things in your life can take time. So just don't rush it. Better to do it right the first time, especially if it is going to be something that involves your health and happiness and your well-being. All right, let's look at just the general spread here and see what else is coming through for health. Quality and quantity of sleep. The Four of Swords is just a little bit on the anemic side when it comes to what you need. This is like the bare minimum. And for some of you, you may be finding that you're tired in the afternoon, that you need a nap, that you wake up and you're not feeling rested. All of these things, obviously standard disclaimer on all of this would apply, but you definitely want to talk to your doctor. But it could be too much work, too little sleep, too much caffeine, stress, any number of things. Take care of that first and foremost, because without a clear head, clear mind, it's going to be difficult to embrace all the opportunities that we're knocking. The, the pentacles cards, the friendship, um, all the resources, so definitely take care of yourself. Not surprisingly, the very next card that really jumps out is the devil. And so this is basically, what just came into my mind is the devil that you know. So some of you may be sticking with something just because it's predictable. And what Spirit's telling me right now is that, the, you know, the devil that you know is still the devil. So convenient but wrong is still wrong, even if it is predictable. So that's one thing. This is also avoiding going back into old patterns. So especially for those of you that maybe are, you know, several years sober and you've been successful at, you know, letting go of something. If there's a person, place or thing that triggers you, be mindful of that. For the rest of us, this is also saying there are certain things that we do. We tell ourselves a little white lie that it's not going to matter. It's not a big deal. This card is coming through saying just take care of yourself. You owe it to yourself to let go of whatever habit, person, place, or thing around you might be kind of like bringing you into a less healthy space. And that's really all I have to say with that. Typically the devil's easily identifiable, so see it and release it. Again, looking at the Queen of Cups here, there was a very clear thing that came through as I focused on it. There's a reflection on this. So she's looking behind her and maybe going into that energy of, I could've, I would've, I should've. There's no room for that right now. Release that energy of regret. Really focus on the here and the now. Sometimes gazing towards the future, there can be overthinking. There can be unnecessary anxiety. There can just be a heaviness of the emotions. And that's why typically when this card is reversed, it can feel like you're drowning in an emotional feeling. So for anyone where that resonates, obviously lean on support. Know that you've got what it takes to get through this, especially with what we had in the deep past. And it's just a decision, like I've had enough of this, I'm ready for this, I'm gonna reach out for some help here. It's getting organized. It's also paying attention to whatever that fly in the ointment is and doing something about it. Most of the cards are really manageable. So focusing on sleep, recalibrating and, and balancing out emotions, clearing out the environment, those are the main ones here that I see and everything else I feel like you can, um, you can manage. All right, let's move on to the next category, which is wealth. In wealth, you actually got a really positive message here. It's a partnership card, it says support, spiritual support, and there's a little mantra or prayer at the bottom, and it says, dear angels, I allow you to support me as I grow to become more spiritually aware. There's, for some reason, a resistance to this message here. So I wanna start off with just that affirmation that the universe has your back. 
no matter what blessing or challenge is coming through, and it could be both. We have a blessing, we have a hidden ally, and then we have a fly in the ointment. And for some of you, it's the fly in the ointment where you're focusing on this and thinking, well, because this didn't go the way that I wanted, I really don't trust that I have that spiritual, it's there. The, the spiritual support works in two ways. It will try to communicate with you in dreams, in meditation, in signs, in signals, in ideas. If it doesn't sometimes sit there, then it will work in the environment and say, all right, we need you to move out of the situation. We're going to make it uncomfortable. And that's it. It's redirection. It's instead of a little tap or a little nudge or a little, you know, tap on the shoulder, it's instead a little bit more of a push saying you need to move. Devil and tower energy work that way. It makes it without a shadow of a doubt, clear that something isn't ideal. And that's it. View it that way. Your mantra this month to help you through the challenges is, the universe has my back and I'm gonna land on my feet and it's gonna be better wherever I end up than where I am now. And that, my friends, puts you into the energy of creation rather than feeling stuck. Another mantra is, I am not stuck. I'm now just aware that this doesn't work and I'm now looking for the next opportunity. Remember the decisive piece. When you know what you want, the universe can help you get that opportunity more quickly. You have to, to keep that energy of clarity and faith and, and then cut out whatever this is. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more. By the way, some of the spiritual support could come in this hidden four of wands that I had to recognize, I'm like there's a card missing here. So there might be something missing in your life. It could also be deciding to focus a little bit more on friendship, love, or relationships overall. Yes, we're in wealth, but that's work-life balance for you. All right, so looking specifically at wealth, it's a month of ends and beginnings. This could be something you say enough with, but right on the sort of heels of that, we have a gate opening, we have an ace of pentacles, we saw the seed here, this is something that will make you happier and healthier by making that necessary change. So if you're stuck in wealth, there's openings. You're not going to remain stuck. I think also for many of you, there's an awakening or an idea that comes even through dreams, daydreams, or meditation. And that's why I'm trying to get you to do it this month, if you will. Let's break it down so I can give you more specific details. We're going to start off with those of you presently employed. Then I'll look at those seeking employment and those that are retired or students. If you are in a job, good for you. First and foremost, you've done a lot of hard work here. And people are taking notice when they didn't before. There are two things I want to highlight. In this card, we see the hard work that goes into making things happen, relationships in particular. Now, some people don't want to do the work and they just show up when things look better. Those are the fair weather friends. Other people will be with you and help you turn things around. Really take stock of things when, because I feel like some of you are on the precipice of success. If you just start to meet new people that pretend that they were always there, but you kind of heard before them saying things or they weren't showing up in the way that felt like they really had your back, you know where they are. You know the truth. Focus on that person or those people in the Four of Wands that were always there, that always did the work. Those are the people that will be with you through thick and thin. All right, briefly, let's break this down into those that are uh, employed and really just focus on what you should be looking at. One thing that is so important here is that if you see something that looks or feels wrong, don't do it. Uh, speak up. You can't ignore it. You can possibly rally support to change it. You don't have to do this alone. You don't want to take on the devil alone. Um, get support. And I see multiple people here, three. One is not really keen on it, but she'll do it or they'll do it. The other two are there. They're part of this um, ride or die group here in the Four of Wands. Uh, and there might even be a fourth here, literally like a manager or something. So if there's something wrong, talk to people, get support, change it. So you could change it. So that's one thing because I try to work from a place that is not fearful and we look at all the opportunities and you could create necessary movement. This is especially true if you want to stay somewhere, but something's broken. Speak up. Okay. That's one very clear, very sort of specific um, message for some of you. For the rest of you, this is showing that you might just be growing long in the tooth and outgrowing something. There's only so much you can do in one space and you feel like you're putting more and more in but not getting much out. 
And so this is where some of you may decide to create something new. And we'll talk more about that because that kind of falls into the next group. Um, but for some of you, if you're entrepreneurial and you just did it, I think it would work here too. So if you want to start a business, there could be something that you're looking for. Additional revenue, a partnership, because you don't want to have to do it all on your own. So be smart about that. Know what you need and don't overextend yourself. You can create something new. Again, some of you have just gone as far as you can in a certain space. You can stay or you can um, explore new opportunities. If you want a job seek this month or if you want to create a new company, you can do both. We'll focus more on that in the next piece. Some of you are busy and bored or some of you are just feeling like I can't do this anymore. So decide what you want to do next. Talk to some people. Doors can open even at the same place of business. I know that um, one, my, the last big job that I had, I worked in three different divisions and I had three different titles. And in one division, actually, I had like a fourth one too because I changed. So I had four different incarnations at one place. And I kept moving from boss to boss, division to, to, to division, and kept trying new things. And it was fun. I got to learn a lot. I was definitely ready by the end to leave. But you never know what you can do in the same space unless you try. And that was the only way that I could stay is if I was still somehow navigating and learning a different facet of the business. So that's what she's doing here. She's opening up something new. So if you're staying, you're creating. If you're stuck, you're creating a sort of like an escape route. And either way, you're going to land on your feet here. We have really good cards with resources, three of the best. You just have to move beyond limiting thoughts this month or limiting people. And sometimes it's a bad manager that is not coming through and doing what they said they were going to do. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to put you in line for that promotion and it doesn't happen. And you've done the work and you're deserving of it. So make sure that you do the work and the research and are willing to take a call your own bluff. But if you look and find something and you're willing to go there, you can use that as a negotiation tactic. One word of warning, though. I have found in my own experience and just watching friends and family that if you have to go to the point of a threat, basically saying, I found a job, they're going to pay me more or, or give me a better title. And then the person says, please, please don't leave and you stay. They're never going to have the same, the same trust because they know that you were willing to leave once. And also you had to push, you had to extract that out of them. Is it worth it? I don't know. You get to decide, but that might be what it takes is to go out, um, outside and then get a, uh, a counter offer. Okay. And that's possible this month. I'll read what I can see. Contracts. You've got to look at those really, really clear. This is especially true for those of you that are going to kind of go into this next category, which is job seeking. Make sure that there's no non-competitive clause. Make sure that you've done everything that you need to, that you give enough notice, that if you've got any education, that you've worked long enough to pay it back, et cetera, et cetera. And that's everything. I will say at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that love you. You've done a lot of great work and you can open new doors. There's something about the environment right now that needs to be dealt with. You can decide if you want to fix it or if you want to go. For those that are seeking jobs, let's look at that. I know why some of you are seeking it and that's okay. We just talked about it. There may be a little bit of a lull where you're not hearing back from someone, but that's okay. Um, I want you to put several sort of like seeds out there, several irons in the fire, because it feels like eventually one or two of these is going to come back, just not immediately. There's a little bit of the four of swords is like crickets. Um, so initially, something around the timing isn't perfectly right. I think that what would be great, especially if it's possible for you is to try to connect with somebody um, through a friend or through a reference, four of wands is word of can be words of word of mouth rather. And also for some of you, go to a networking event and try to kind of like have a rapport with someone. Uh, I know there's not as many of these that are non-virtual anymore, but if there is any in-person things, now is the time to do that. So a little bit of a delay. There's there's one that is not good enough for you. The devil is just what it looks like. It's they're trying to get more from you than they should not pay you enough or the benefits are lacking something's wrong say no to that there's something better create uh, creative ventures and just your own ability to manage yourself it feels like that's important so creativity and self 
self-sufficiency. If you can't get something like that, wait until you find the right group and really pay attention to company culture and morale. I think that's so important. Some of you want to go back to school and I get a, a big old yes on that. The Hermit and the Ace of Pentacles, it's a good return on your investment. If you want training, certification, school, education, yes. And I do see something eventually, but there's a little bit of a delay towards the beginning of the month. Give it some time, okay? And we get a big yes on entrepreneurial energy. If you don't see it, maybe you have to create it. I have a very entrepreneurial spirit and I like it. It's, it's challenging sometimes. You have to figure out how much time, energy, and money you're willing to put into something. Do the homework, do the research, talk to other people who have done it before. If you're retired, good for you. Um, one thing that I see for some of you is this feeling of being stuck, even though uh, you're, you know, maybe you're just a recent retire, retiree, I should say. And um, this devil energy is sort of feeling like, all right, I used to align myself with this group, with this activity, with this habit, but it doesn't work anymore. And so this month is about blowing all that to smithereens and saying, I want to try some new stuff. I want to put my, I want to roll up my sleeves and, and get my hands dirty and try something new, maybe a new craft, maybe a new uh, skill, maybe something that you've never done before. Um, maybe the training that I talked about certification, it could be for anything, including Reiki or something like that. You want to do something new just because, and I'm getting the hands here with this gardening, Reiki construction, something where you get to just build or create or facilitate and Retirement is just an end of one thing and a beginning of another thing. You can retire at any age. Um, there may be some young retirees or traditional aged ones, but the gate is basically saying now new things are opening up. And you realize the importance of every day. I realize it with every year that passes, with every decade, or as people that you love pass in and, and go into spirit. It's sort of like time here is so valuable. You don't have one minute to waste. Really do some exciting things. What I see, I don't know why I'm clapping so much. Um, what I see for many of you is expanding your friend network, exploring your creative skills, doing something hands-on because it feels good, because it makes you feel a part of something, and I'm behind all of that, okay? If there are people around you that are pressuring you to do something that you don't want to do, you don't have time or energy for that, time to cut those ties. Students... You're doing well. There's a little bit of fear, pressure, or stress. Some of you might be watching me during a period where there's some tests, um, you know, but you're gonna pass the test or you're going to be okay even if something in the short term doesn't work out because long-term cards are showing good things. Focus on um, networking and really spending time with some of these people that you know now. When I think back and look at my groups of friends right now, uh, I would say at least one third of them come from classmates back in the day. Another one third or maybe even more um, come from co-workers and then the rest are my friends, my family and my random acquaintances. But you know, a big portion of that is former co-workers and former classmates. So take time to get to know those people. They will follow you through life. Um, don't rush through that. And uh, again, the people that are with you through thick and thin, they're typically also there through all the facets of life. Nice segue to look at love. <laughs> this is connecting so clearly with the devil energy. Um, denial. I acknowledge my fear, but I replace it with insight and awareness or insight of awareness. So this is an end to denial. Um, when you, you can't unsee something, it's what we talked about before. And there may be someone in your life that's trying to sweep something under the rug and you're just you're going to come through and say no we got to talk about this right so an end of denial uh something that reveals itself and just deciding for me that the key thing that helps with denial is education um so learning as much as you can and that's why you've got the hermit at the center okay let's break this down into three categories those in love looking for love or um, happily single if you're in love there's something challenging going on around you. It doesn't necessarily mean it's either of you. This could be something you can't control. Simply put, in finances, in work, there could be something going on even in the house that you're living in, something in the environment that needs attention. The two of you can handle it as long as you work together and not against each other. 
One challenge in the relationship right now could just be a lack of effort. We all get that way sometimes in any relationship, including friendships. But specifically in love relationships right now, it could just feel like I'm tired or they're tired. And uh, that's why I saw someone hitting the snooze alarm. <laughs> so I understand. But you have to put the effort in. You get what you give. And as long as you keep giving, the relationship will thrive. Someone could feel just underappreciated or again, they want you to ignore something and you can't. A promise that wasn't kept could be coming to the surface. There could be infidelity, there could be a lie, there could be something face value with the devil. The cards um, that are showing outcome are, are promising though. Four of Wands is friendship and the Queen of Cups processing emotions, but eventually landing in a place where you can forgive or you can um, move past it if it's not gigantic. But if it is big, then that's what we have here, the Four of Swords. This is someone who's just saying, I'm done. Especially for those of you that might be in a long-term relationship, but there's no contract, no marriage contract. You might just be thinking, I can't get past this. I need time. And so maybe one or both of you need some time and space. And even if there is the marriage contract, before you take the next step, it feels like one or both of you just need a little bit of space to deal with something tricky. And so give the other person space if they need it. And I think the most important thing here is to keep an open heart, open mind, keep the door open. Uh, and that's all you can do. You can't force someone to walk through that door or with you through that door. You can just sort of show where the possibility is. If everything's good in the relationship, though, this could just be something unexpected, unexpected pregnancy. Um, it could be the loss or gain of a job or money. There's something coming through where it's like, oh, what are we going to do? How are we going to face this? Well, with honesty, communication, and integrity, and then you get rid of that. This is just in the environment. It's not in the outcome. Let's not give the devil more energy, weight, or attention than it needs. I see friendship. I see love. I see fatigue. So work with each other. Okay, that's it. And if something's come to a head and someone said something, accept it. Talk about it. Put it in the open. For those that are seeking love, are you truly ready right now? This is just the universe coming through with like a get real moment. The devil can show me a lot of energy here, specifically with money and, um, and work and just a busy. I mentioned the eight of wands and the phone that was vibrating. There's just a lot going on. So it feels like you've got to let some things go before you have space for that. You may also meet someone who's attached. Literally, we can see the attachment here. So they may be attached well, to their job, they could be still in a marriage then, and they haven't fin finalized a divorce. They may not be ready to get out of a marriage. It's just they can't give you what you want. Whatever it is, see that, accept it, release it. There are multiple partners coming through this month. Queen of Cups, Princess of Pentacles, and the Prince of Pentacles all here um, coming through pretty quickly. One thing that I see here is a lack of clarity sometimes or um, for many of you just so many things going on it's like do you have room for one more relationship overall so i think it's good this month to just take stock and take some time yes you can find love but sort out whatever you need to in your life first and then when you're ready it's a, a deep soul connection with the hermit it feels like this can go the distance and it could just be a little overwhelming too whenever it comes through all right Next piece. Actually, one more thing my guides want me to say. There could also be a child attached to the person that you met. So someone could be divorced, has a child, is nervous about talking about that, or doesn't want another child because they already have one. And so that's a, a wrinkle that some of you can look at and decide how you feel about that. All right. For those that are happily single, good for you. Um, I think right now is a great time for personal development. That's the main thing coming through. This is at any age or any stage. You can just learn a lot. Um, I see resources moving in the right direction. Um, it feels like also you're just kind of like a sponge. It can soak up a lot of information and experiences. So drink it in. Have a good time. Do some things. Take a break too. Take a vacation if you can. Resources seem to be in the right place for that. All right. Let's move on to Destiny where you got two cards. If we combine these two, we have the, the sword and Aletheia. It's really about speaking the truth. So um, this is the goddess of truth. She was a personification of it, among other things. Um, and of course, a sword, 
particularly an ace of sword, is about taking action or speaking up about something. So this, I think, connects very nicely to the energy of the devil and the environment. In love, it connects with the denial. And what we talked about earlier with the eight of swords, about bringing attention to something that perhaps an authority figure or a mentor wants to hide, <laughs> you're coming through and saying, no, we have to speak about this. So this month, the power of truth and the power of communication are your secret sauce. <laughs> and truth is what will get rid of this energy at the end of the day. The devil doesn't like the truth. The devil doesn't like clear communication. So if you use it, you're good. In the, I'd written a, a book called The Luminous Ones, and there was a line in there like, let truth be my hammer. Kind of like I had this idea that there are certain, it's almost like what you see in Dune where there's a certain voice or certain power in communication where it can cut through stuff. And I really think truth is that, you know? So when you're using your voice, using your truth, and you're speaking in a way that you're not going to let someone intimidate you or block you, they don't know what to do because they're not used to it. So say no, say I see you and speak about whatever it is that you need to and trust me you're going to have the you're going to have an ability to make a change or an impact that you didn't think you could so use your voice speak the truth and also it can just be speaking your truth it doesn't have to always be in the face of the devil the devil can just be a limiting thought or you being held back from from something because of fear so when you just speak what your truth is it's like stepping into star energy this is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is why it's going to work. Ding, ding, ding. The universe starts to light up. Opportunities come through and it's exciting. <laughs> All right. That's pretty powerful, folks. Let's move on and nicely connected to, to destiny, by the way. Let's take a look at sun rising and moon sign messages to get a deeper understanding of everything that's coming through. So far, it's been a pretty magical reading. When I started it, I had to pause a bit because we had lightning too. So we've got like lightning, we had a secret card, we have really powerful energy here. So let's see what sun rising and moon have to say here. Sun rising and moon, they're all pretty good. Let's start off with the sun sign. We have the queen of swords, there she is, coming through just like we talked about. She is definitely a straight shooter. She definitely would, would use the truth um, as her ally, weapon, tool, etc. So everything I just said times 10 here with the Queen of Swords. She's a card of action. If you know what you want, what are you doing to make it happen? She's connected with legal matters. If you need to right or wrong, do it. Connect with a, an expert that's going to help you with that. She's basically telling you that your voice, your actions, and your ability to move things forward this month is where, where it's at. So there you go. This could also be for some of you who you're going to connect with in the four of wands that we saw. So a nice air sign could be coming through. Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Um, and we have transformative energy around her with all the butterflies. Change. She's also holding a mask, which is kind of interesting. So I do believe she's about revealing things and saying, not this, this, or I see through that we have to do this. So truth, Aletheia definitely coming through yet again. Okay, let's move on to rising. By the way, that could also be a contract being signed. All right, rising. Making and breaking cycles. This is good. This is good, especially with this. So for some of you, this is the moment where you say, once and for all, goodbye to that and hello to this. But there has to be a decision, the judgment moment, the light bulb moment, and then then you're able to walk in a new direction. Now, the Eight of Cups represents a moment where many of you take a step back, get a lay of the land, sort out your emotions, and then come back and say what you need to. So for any major decision, major movement, this card is saying there's something powerful in sleeping on that decision and waking up and seeing how you feel the next day. Do I still want to do it? Do I still feel the same way? If so, what am I going to say? What am I going to do to make this happen? Okay. Some of you are way overdue for a break, for rest, for a vacation. And this is validating that as well. There could also be someone coming back into your life from the past. This could be someone that you love. 
And this could be an opportunity to go deeper into that energy. This could all be also be someone that you need to heal um, some sort of a something that didn't go the way that you wanted to in the past. And now's a chance to heal that wound. OK. For Moon, we have King of Wands reversed. The thing that I like about the King of Wands, even in the reverse state, is his ability to stand up for what he cares about. Steadfast, strong, stubborn. There's a time and a place for that. The only area of opportunity for a King of Wands in reverse is sometimes, actually there's two. He's either too bossy and doesn't let people sort of just show that they can do it um, so he can micromanage as well. The other thing is it's almost like there's horse blinders on and he's not seeing everything that's available to him because he expects things to happen in a certain way, shape or form. So keep an open mind, um, listen and give people a chance to show that they can do it before you have to step in and try to put on the boss hat. All right, one more card here. Let's take a look at the final question that you have for me. Anything that I didn't yet answer, a burning question. Let's see what spirit has to say. Seven of Swords. This works in concert with this. It is reversed. That's auspicious. Um, if it's a yes or no, the Seven of Swords tells you you already know what to do here. Um, something isn't what it seems. And um, this is nuance. It's typically a no when you pull the Seven of Swords, but it is reversed. So it's a confirmation that if you need to say no or step away from something, that that's the right thing. What we want to avoid with Seven of Swords is making a promise that we can't keep because this El Diablo is going to try to hold you to that promise. It's about making sure that if you witness someone or something that is wrong, you know, that, that shouldn't be that you you try to fix that or, or talk about that or, or somehow bring it to a place of being right. It's also just stepping away from things, seeing the spider web that the, the devil uh, sort of weaves and saying, I don't not today, not again. No, I'm done. So just avoiding those sorts of things. It's good for you to move in a new direction. It's okay to cut people, places, or things out of your life that are not accountable. And that's the last thing that I, I'm really going to focus on with this is it's all about accountability. If someone or something in your life lacks that accountability, this is a month to let it go. There's too many things to celebrate before we wrap up. What I do love about this month, so many good resource cards. Not only that, the Four of Wands is almost like a Wheel of Fortune. And with partnership or cooperation, you can move through something. This can just simply be a limiting thought or idea. The rest of the spread is pretty good. The main thing here is emotional exhaustion or fatigue. So take care of yourself this month. That, my friends, is everything. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe. It helps more than you would imagine. So thank you in advance for that. Um, also, if you want to show a little bit of support on social media, you can do that by following me. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh, on all major platforms. Uh, and you can always go to my website if you'd like to see some additional information. Remember, by the way, I just saw a new imposter on TikTok and had to report them this morning. Um, I don't offer private readings. I don't use direct messages. And I don't add extra characters to my name. This one was a bad misspelling, but sometimes they're trickier. So... Um, a word to the wise. Just, just be mindful of that. Report it if you see it. Comment if you do as well, and I'll do my best to put in a report. If you want to show support, um, you can like and subscribe and become a channel member. That allows me to do new things like my podcast, which just launched um, this month, and you can check it out. I'll put a link also in the, um, uh, basically in all the embedded links here too. Thank you for being the absolute best part of what I do here on YouTube. Without your love, support, and encouragement, I couldn't do what I do here. So thank you. And I hope you have a fantastic month ahead. Keep me posted, like I said, in the comments below. And in the meantime, sending you lots of love and light.